Mr. Speaker, through you, I want uh, to ensure that the Prime Minister, the Minister for Castries, is notice I'm the only one who has not commented on his harvest. So I expect, I expect a bountiful reward in my allocation. Mr. Speaker, I'm also glad to see the member from Mikut South in attendance today. He was not available, Mr. Speaker, during the budget, but he's here today, Mr. Speaker, to, dis to debate economic policy. And he also used the word war, Mr. Speaker. But as we know, Mr. Speaker, the first casualty of war is the truth. So he is simply demonstrating that exact premise, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> the records exist, but just for a quick little reminder, Mr. Speaker, the public debt stock, including payables and road-related liabilities, stood at $4.6 billion as of the 31st of December, 2021. Approximately, Mr. Speaker, 101% of GDP. The interest burden, Mr. Speaker, of St. Lucia was the highest in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. St. Kitts, Mr. Speaker, was 3% of fiscal revenues. Dominica, 4%. Grenada, 6%. St. Vincent, 6%. Antigua, 12%. But St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, was 15% of fiscal revenues. Anybody, Mr. Speaker, who is Okumar with those figures would recognize, Mr. Speaker, 15% of fiscal revenues is a significant concern for anybody in financial services, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's also interesting to note that the member from Miku South was able to confirm today that this economy, Mr. Speaker, is running better now than it was between 2016 and 2021. So I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for that recognition. Mr. Speaker, there are more people employed today contributing to the NIC than ever before, Mr. Speaker. Ever before. Why now, Mr. Speaker, is what he said. But what I'm wondering, Mr. Speaker, is what is wrong with responding to your needs of your citizens? Does it matter when you respond? The point is we recognize that there was an issue and we're moving to address it, Mr. Speaker. We don't believe, Mr. Speaker, that they are barking dogs, and neither do, Mr. Speaker, do we have the discipline Mr. Speaker, we don't believe that they are backing dogs. Mr. Speaker, perhaps you could explain the motivation behind the true reduction of VAT, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that 2.5 percent, the story will be told. No one in ancillary, Mr. Speaker, is spending a thousand dollars on groceries. For you to get a benefit of that reduction in VAT, twenty-five dollars reduction in VAT of, of savings, you would have to have spent a thousand dollars. I can't think of too many in my constituency, Mr. Speaker, spending $1,000 on groceries. But the truth as to the damage of that reduction in the VAT, Mr. Speaker, will be told at some point, Mr. Speaker. Finally, Mr. Speaker, as I said earlier, he admitted that the economy is running better today than it ever was before. Mr. Speaker, the amendment to the Pensions Act, Mr. Speaker, I mentioned the Pensions uh, Amendment Act, Mr. Speaker, is crucial for maintaining a fair system that meets the evolving needs of pensioners. The change, Mr. Speaker, reflects an economic reality with a goal of providing secure financial support for individuals in their retirement years, thereby, Mr. Speaker, helping to encourage or to improve the quality of life. Mr. Speaker, the amendment is a significant achievement, not just in quantum, Mr. Speaker, but in terms of reach. And there's a little statistics, Mr. Speaker, from the 12th actual review of the NIC, Mr. Speaker. The aging population, those who age 65 and over, represent, Mr. Speaker, around 10.7% of our population. In 16 years' time, Mr. Speaker, in 2040, it will represent 20.6% of our population, Mr. Speaker. And that's a significant sum, Mr. Speaker, for us to be taken into consideration. The pension figure, Mr. Speaker, has been adjusted from time to time since 1979. The minimum pension, Mr. Speaker, was increased from 200 to 300 per month in 2010, and further increased, Mr. Speaker, by 3% from 300 to 409 in 2015. However, Mr. Speaker, that was only for existing pensioners. As of the 1st of August, Mr. Speaker, the minimum pension will be $725, Mr. Speaker. 
a welcome addition, Prime Minister, for anybody in the constituency of Ontario Canaries. Mr. Speaker, it is often said that the moral test of a government is how it treats those in the twilight of their life. Today, Mr. Speaker, we are demonstrating our commitment to putting people first. Mr. Speaker, without any reservation, I support the Pensions Amendment Bill. Thank you very much.